Hey, Rollicious Souls, my name's Tony. If you are new here, welcome. So we've got the Hazoo Hope on. I'm really excited to be sharing this interview with you today because it's the first time I've ever heard about the gravity colonics. It's um, quite different to, you know, your general hydrocolonics and the enemas, which Hazoo actually explains that they can actually be quite dangerous. This is much more gentle, more effective and more beneficial. So I'm excited to be sharing this with you today. If you are new to colonics, then what a great one to have. And also if you've been using colonics, maybe shift to the gravity because Hazoo also explains about how you can set up your own one at home without going to a therapist. So really excited to be sharing. Enjoy, watch to the end because there's loads of great nuggets. Mwah. Hello, my Rollicious Souls. Welcome back to my channel. We have the gorgeous Azu who's in Koh Phangan. Uh, where are you originally from? I'm Cuban. I was born in Cuba, but I grew up also partly in the States. So. Oh, beautiful. And how long have you been in Koh Phangan? Five years already. Oh, wow. Long time. So it's home. Yes, it's home now. I, I'm definitely here for the long term. Yeah. What brought you to Koh Phangan? Um, I didn't know this place existed. I, when I moved to Thailand, I moved to Samui. And on my way up north, I was like, oh, you know, I don't like Samui to live because there's no community. It's not the same uh, or what I was looking for. And then I stopped by here to do a photo shoot with some girls. I was doing uh, photography a, a little bit at the time, playing with it. And I got here and I'm just like, yes, this is what I was looking for. This is. This is the place. So before I left, I still went up north to check it out, but I put a deposit on a house. And oh. I've been here ever since, five years ago. <laughs> it does that, doesn't it? It really does. I can see why you stayed there long term. Great weather, great food, people, community, everything. <laughs> yeah. So, and then you got into detoxification on, on more of the colon cleansing. You do the gravity because I've, I've, I've done a few enemas, but I've done a lot of uh, hydro, it's the hydrotherapy, you know, Life Co here in Phuket, they do the colon hydrotherapy. I believe it's a similar thing because it's a cir closed circuit. Is that what the gravity uh, ther uh, colon therapy does? What you I don't think there's anybody else doing gravity in Thailand but me. So I don't think that there's anybody else doing that. It may be the Klima. Um, or a machine colonic, what you had in Phuket. It's a machine. Yeah, yeah, it's the machine. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm interested to know what is the difference because I, I love the experience I get from, I go I get the nurse to assist mm -hmm. me um, and she does the whole, and you have the machine at the, at the back and yeah. then she does the, I think it's like a lymphatic massage. Um, okay. And I've gone for quite a few sessions and I love it. I love how it makes me feel and I do it during the juice cleanses. Um, so for you then, how did you, could you explain what you, what is gravity colonic? Sure. So uh, first of all, I got into gravity way before I got to Thailand. I did not do this here. Like I was trained in New York City. Um, so I worked in New York City as a therapist for over three and a half years. And then I stopped working as a therapist because I was working as a coach uh, for a while. And then when I came to Thailand, I kept hearing this little voice in my head, you have to give colonics, you have to give colonics. And I'm like, okay, I don't think the voice is going to go away until I do this. So I'm going to do this again. And that's how it started here. And that was four years ago. Um, what is uh, what is gravity? Gravity uh, first of all, it, it the original name is Woods uh, Gravity Woods Colonics or Woods Gravity Colonics um, for Dr. Woods. Uh, he created a system that works the way that the body works to release from the inside. So the original way of colon cleansing has always been something similar or akin to an enema. Um, that was what was discovered in Egypt thousands of years ago and all of that, right? Um, but this one takes it a step further because <clears throat> you have 
a tank of water above that is set at a certain distance from the body that will not create a lot of pressure because the farther up it is, the more pressure it will bring into the body. So the body is really controlling how much water, the flow of water. Um, so this is not a pressurized type of flow like what you get with the machine colonics, which is not taking into account what your body can handle or what your body should be able to handle. It's like the machine colonics, they just put a lot of water inside and it works a little bit like in, 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 and then out. The gravity, the brilliance of it is that it goes in and out at the same time. So it's never really filling up the person unless that's one thing that you wanna do in order to move the session along. Um, that's, we call that a hold. Uh, so when we're holding water inside the body, but I have found that I don't use that tool nearly as much as I used to in New York City. I was taught to use that tool um, a lot and I don't use it almost at all anymore because I feel that people release very well with like a more gentle approach when I focus on removing the gas from the body, which is another thing that gravity colonics does that enemas cannot do polymas cannot do, machine colonics cannot do just because of the way that they work. The way that they work is that they're pushing stuff back and then it's coming out. Yeah. But gravity, because it's going in and out at the same time, it has a mechanism that allows for the air that's inside of the body to come out very gently. If you create some space uh, with some air that's going into the, with the water, um, and I have found that to be very gentle. It's very soft. It doesn't feel anything. Like I have had hundreds of people that come from a, like a history of doing a lot of enemas or doing machine colonics. And they're like, wow, this is like completely different. This is so gentle. This is like blew my expectations. And also it releases a lot more, <laughs> like, because you're, you're really working with the body and you're allowing the body to dictate the session rather than just forcing the body to do what it shouldn't be doing. You know, the body gets to decide what it can handle and what it cannot, you know? Um, and I like working with that because otherwise you're just hurting the person, you know? And that's not like, it's not fair because people are, if people are trusting you with their body, you should be taking good care of it. And if you're doing something like that, you could be harming them. So I don't think that's, uh, that's a good thing to do. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, because there's a bad rap with colonics, isn't there? And there's a lot of people misusing, and maybe overusing even enemas and, and these, these uh, machines, uh, colonics. So this is a much gentler foot, which makes it it's more comforting. And I wish I got chance to... It happens so yeah. fast. I was leaving. I'll be back. It's a shame that you're not, um, you're not over here. Maybe let me know if you come to Phuket. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. The the overuse and the abuse uh, cannot really happen with gravity. It can definitely happen with enemas and with machine colonics because of the way that they work. They could create a, a tendency, like a like a dependency. Because if you're looking at how an enema works, an enema works by filling and then releasing, but that's not how the body works. The body works through peristalsis, right? So if you're making the body believe that it needs to be like this before it releases, like the colon, right? The colon needs to fill up before it releases. Okay, what is that teaching the body? You need to be full before you release. You need to create force before you release, right? These are all things that you don't want to teach the body to get used to, because then you're gonna need to have those things in order to release, and that's not that's not okay. That's not okay. Um, I I do a lot of education with the people that come to me that do enemas, and I'm like, how are you doing your enemas? And I am very friendly. Yeah. Okay, tell me. You tell me. And it's like, okay, no, no, no. Tell me the steps, the exact steps that you're taking to do your enemas. And they tell me everything. And when they get to the point where like, and then I fill up and I'm going to hold it as long as possible. I'm like, okay, that's the point that I wanted to get to. Please don't do that. <laughs> and I don't like it. That's why I stopped. I stopped the enemas. I didn't, it is not comfortable for me. Yeah. It's 
there is a lot of bad education online about how to do enemas and the whole thing of like filling up a liter or two liters and holding it as long as possible. That is the worst that you could do for the column. The column does not work like this. The column works like this. And this is why the, the gravity is so great because we use latex uh, rubber tubing. So the tubing is mimicking peristalsis. That's what we're doing to simulate a release. And it's teaching the body, oh, okay, it's time to release. And it's okay to be light. It's okay to empty out. It's okay, you know, and it's teaching the body the exact way how they should be working. It's okay to be, to release when there is, uh, when there is not that much inside, you can still release, it's fine. You know, you're kind of gradually, and it takes a while for some people, honestly. Like sometimes it takes a really long time to retrain the body based on how people have, you know, what kind of damage they've done. Um, but it's a, it's a much different approach in, in total. Like it works very, very well. Yeah. And, and what would be the reason someone would, would, would use the gravity colonic? What, what would be the reasons? Why do people come to you to use that? I mean, there's people that if they have digestive upset in any way, so say that they have something like, um, um, yeah, IBS or something like that, that's more yeah. like a chronic way or someone that just has food poisoning or um, people that have had a lot of gas and it's causing a lot of pain in their stomach or um yeah, people that just feel super bloated, like yeah. like gas that's releasing a lot or then super bloated, digestive issues of any kind. And then there, there's the other crowd that's like more on the detox side that they're doing it when they're cleansing, um, after a dry fast or when they're doing like liver cleanses and things like this. So there's uh, a lot of ways to use it in detox um but my firm belief is that if you're doing any kind of detox you should be doing colon cleansing so whether someone does gravity or not is beside the point personally i feel that if you're doing uh something else you should be doing enemas and not machine colonics and not colimas because the colimas the way that I've seen is that there's not a lot of information when they t tell people, oh, you do it like this, and then they just leave them, you know? And they're not really sharing, like, what's the harm of you overfilling your colon? And people are there and, like, I don't know what to do. I'm not, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And then you're, you're harming yourself. You, you're essentially really, really hurting yourself. And I think there's a lot there's a lot less possibility to do that with an enema, even if the mechanism is very sim is very similar, just because you have a lot more quantity of liquid with a, um, with a colima, and then you can end up like filling until you explode into the toilet. It's right. like, no, 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 no. You know? Um, yeah, I, and with the machine colonics, it's the pressure that's uh, very problematic. So if you have someone that's very skilled therapist, like you can have a really excellent session, but you have to find a really good one, you know, and someone that's not very prone to filling you up so much. Like my first colonic ever was a, a machine and I, I, I almost, I felt really honestly and truly, I'm telling you, I felt like I almost died. Uh, that woman kept filling, 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 and um, nothing was. They tell you, they tell you to, because I remember she's like, I thought oh, I'm going to keep, I just relaxing it to keep filling up. So now I'm thinking, I thought it was better to keep holding. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. That's scary. That's the worst thing that you could possibly do. The worst thing that you could possibly do. I mean, you just. I am a very big believer in looking at nature and see how things work and then working with the flow of nature, not against it. And when you're doing something like that, you're going against the flow of nature. So that's why a lot of, I've had a lot of people that come to me after um, or asking me questions after a bunch of machine colonics and I'm just like, 
that's not what that's not what should be happening and that's why a lot of the time like i i personally i've been in situations where i've been in places where the only option is a machine colonic and i prefer not to yeah i just i would choose not to have a machine colonic than to and have i prefer not to have a colonic than to have a machine colonic wow like, okay that's good to know, <laughs> you know like there's also yeah. some people that have found really good therapists and yeah. they are really happy with it and i'm like go you personally just from experience i've also had quite a few people this was like sometime last year that came to me in a row this is why i noticed it because i i'm like a storage of information comes to seeing patterns, seeing what's going on with people. And I had quite a few people that came to me in a row that had done a lot of enemas or a lot of colimas recently, like be right before they came to me. And they their colonics from prior to that had changed dramatically. These are like clients that I see quite often or I've seen quite a few times. So I was like, you're, you're doing something that's not good for your calling because the way that your calling is reacting right now is not okay like it's not okay it's like like i had to use a lot more force a lot more uh you know when everything was so flowing so easily and so gently and everything was like going really great and all of a sudden like they're exploding <laughs> a bit you know and i'm just like that's not what was happening before what did you do different Oh, Why did you do different? And then they were telling me, oh, yeah, we got a Kalima border. Oh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of enemas. And I'm like, yeah, you need to you need to shift that a little bit <laughs> or at least do them differently. You know, I'm not I I'm never to tell someone don't do this. But I'm saying there's a huge difference in and risk. There's a huge yeah. Risk. Why choose something risky when there's this option? Well, with this option, um, I know you were saying about the others, unless you get someone who is really skilled, know what they're doing in the machine colonics or the enemas, even that, just be more conscious. But this would be a better way. I wish there were more. Maybe you have to duplicate yourself or something. Get, definitely get some other info kit um, because people aren't aware of this. And this is something I'd like to share. And this is why I've been drawn to the, the gravity. There's a lot of people in Kofan Yang that was um, referring to the gravity colonics. How often would you um, suggest? Obviously, it depends on each individual. But what sort of the healthiest amount of times you would get? If it's a case by case, and I suppose depending on their uh, severity. There's only, one, there's only one answer. The answer is if you're releasing in your first colonic, you can come as long as, as often as you want. If you're not releasing, then you wait longer. Oh, okay. That's, that's the only answer. So a healthy person will release a lot, an unhealthy person will not, which means that they need to do some work before they can release. It doesn't mean that there's nothing inside. It just means that your body's not releasing. Why? Why is your body not releasing? And this is something that I've heard from all my teachers, and I've noticed myself as well. When I'm releasing very well, generally, it's because I'm the healthiest. Mm -hmm. This is when I'm the healthiest. Um, how often do you get it that because you've got your own set up do you do it once a week i do it once a week yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. at some points i've done twice a week at some points i've done like once a month you know yeah. like less than once a month doesn't really uh it's not really cumulative so you can't really get results that you see over time that this is really helping improving something it's more like maintenance than anything mm -hmm. but if you're doing it less than that in between you will notice a difference over time it's going to it's going to change things and what sort of different way, way i don't know huh? sorry i said in what way i don't know like it depends on the person like if they're healing something or their body needs to use that energy that the colonic is uh, helping them save, so to speak, then they're going to use it in whatever way their body needs it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And the differences they get, obviously the relief, but what are the short and long-term uh, benefits? So the way that the colonics work in general, or like one fencing works is that, okay, so now the, all the energy that the body, first of all, okay, let me backtrack. 
if you look at how we work, so we need air, first of all, like without air, we die within like a few minutes and we need water. We need liquids in some way, right? Without that, we die in maybe a few days. Some people have, are testing that boundary. I have like, seen that, yeah. <laughs> which is okay, whatever. Like the, the test of that has, has changed a bit. Uh, but most people, because they're not trained in being able to do this within a few days. And then after that is food. So that means that besides for organ function, like uh, minimal organ function for you to survive, you need to be able to handle breathing, uh, processing water and liquids and all of that, and then processing food. Processing food takes an enormous amount of energy and the body prioritizes it more than anything because that's what you need to survive in the long term. So most of the body's energy is locked up in digestion. Um, and when that's not working, you can see the damage and the chaos that that causes in every other area of the body. The immunity goes down, like, like mental capacity goes down, like everything goes down, everything goes down when digestion doesn't work. Um, I forgot what the question was actually. The benefits, the short, I, I know he's going to because the body, yeah, you're, I, I, because the body needs the food, but what we're doing is we're, we're overwhelming out with the system. Yeah. And it gets so, yeah, so I, I, I recalled what I, where I was going with that, which is the same spiel that I tell my clients all the time, but I'm like, okay, <laughs> what, what was the actual general direction of this? Um, so yeah, when, when we have all this stuff that we need to be digesting all the time, like the body takes up most of the energy. So if you're, if you're sick in another way, like if your body is not able to process the toxins that you're exposed to, um, if you're not able to heal, like say that you actually had like a physical wound and your body is overwhelmed by digestion, that's gonna heal a lot slower everything is going to happen a lot slower. So the process of the body is all slowed down because all the energy goes to digestion. When you do a lot of that work for the body with a colonic, then suddenly there's a lot more energy, right? That the body has, oh, I don't have to do this much right now because it's done for me. So I don't have to worry about this now. Okay. I have a little bit of extra energy. Where am I going to use it? And that's why I've seen people and I've, I've myself healed quite a few things. When I do colonics regularly, my body is not overwhelmed by this process of digestion. Even, even with as little food as I eat these days, because I don't eat that much. I'm still, I still know that there's so much shit inside of me. It's not even funny. Yeah. Like, and that's like everybody. If there's that much inside of me and I know that there is, there's that much inside of everybody because I know how much I eat and how much I consume. So um, I've seen it also in examples of other clients where they're doing long extended fasts and there's so much stuff coming out of them. And it's like, there's no way that that's food because they're in an extended fast and they've done like hundreds of colonics within like a, the space of a year, for example. I had a client that did like over, I think over 200 colonics in a year. I've had friends, I have friends that do colonics regularly, sometimes several times a day um, because they're dealing with crazy amount of detox symptoms from exposure to things that they've dealt with in their lives. And they're healing that and the way to heal or the way to be able to function properly while they're healing and doing, going through crazy intense protocols that they have to in order to heal themselves is to do the clinics so that they can still live a normal functioning life. But it depends on how you use colonics, you know, they're like, for me, it's lifestyle at this point. And I, I know that when I do it, like, like I'm doing it right now, once a week, I'm like committed to do it like this for the whole year. 
I see, I see everything moving a little bit faster. Everything just goes a little bit smoother, you know? Um, but I understand that it's like, expensive. It can be expensive for some people. Like when I get clients that they are doing that many with me, I'm like, you should just set up a system in your home and I help them with that. Like I, I've helped, uh, I think two, or, two people here on the island and I felt like, five or six like across the world like i have a few people in europe and you helped some... annabella annabella she's doing yeah uh, she's friends now yeah so she has her own unit i was like you're gonna go broke if you continue coming to me there's something <laughs> yeah. and i don't i don't want that i don't want i don't want dependency on me either yeah. when someone gets to the level where i feel it's their best suited to have a home unit please I help you set up your home unit so that you can do it on your own. And then you're like independent. You can really, really take charge of your own health, of your own body. Um, I'm, I'm all for that. Like, I, I really don't want anybody to be like throwing their whole life savings at me. You know what I mean? Like, I really, I don't think that that's the yeah. way to do anything, you know? And I don't, and even so, like the, I mean, my colonics are, half of what they are in new york you know like i can only imagine in other places around the world where it's very expensive i have i'm setting up i'm helping a lady set up now in australia and she's like i can't keep going like to to places here like it's like 150 each you know like in uh, australian dollars like um they do use dollars right mm pretty certain <laughs> Australian dollars yeah, yeah yeah so there's yeah it's and you think the price every, if she's intense detoxifying just to uh, alleviate those detox symptoms you want it you were saying once or twice a day that could definitely add up yeah so that's awesome that you're helping others when you feel that they've you know you've got the guidance from you to set it up efficiently so that it yeah is I it's it's the best like I when I moved into this house, the first thing that I looked at was the bathroom. I'm like, can I give, I wasn't thinking about treating people at the time. I was like, can I give myself colonics in here? And then when I started uh, gathering all the equipment that I needed, which takes forever when you're trying to just do it like piece by piece, like, like I did at the beginning, um, but I was like, yeah, I need to know that in what whatever house I'm in, I can give myself colonics. Yeah. That's the most important thing for me. You know, everything else will flow after that. You know, <laughs> if yeah. I can give myself colonics, everything literally, will flow. Literally flow. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. So it's become part of your lifestyle, which is, this is something I'm moving towards too. Um, I feel the more I'm in the raw vegan lifestyle, the cleanses, detoxification. I feel it's now necessary and that's why I was really keen on speaking to you and I wish I did get one with you so I'm definitely going to be coming back just purely to get a session a few sessions with you yeah. <laughs> the gravity so yeah. what we could do we could actually do a little um not real live but we'll do it live but not actually <laughs> don't not live live yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm getting yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well maybe yeah cut some things out but maybe we could film it to see the the experience um, because this, this people, this my my clients have never had this, never had a, a yeah. And honestly, um, I was just watching a, a live with my teacher. I don't know if you know Gil Jacobs. He's the guru of the guru of gravity colonics. He's the person that expanded and brought it to New York City, and then a lot of other. It kind of got spread out from him. Um, and he was saying how like some people have really like damaged their whole body by doing raw and vegan and fruitarian without the, the colonics. Oh. Um, and I see it, I see it before my eyes. There's quite a few people here on the island that are doing that. And I'm like, you, I don't know what kind of guidance people are getting, but you can do it for a little while like i did i was raw vegan for two and a half years and after a while it's too much it's too much and i was that was before i did um 
before I was a therapist. Maybe if I would have been a therapist, I would have like ended up doing it a little bit longer. Um, but when you're trying to do that without the colonics, with as much as you're detoxing, you're really hurting yourself. You really are. And there's a lot of information out there that's like, it's really, really killing people. And then the, you have people that go to raw, like trying to heal, trying to um, really get better from all these things. They get a little better and then they keep doing it and then they start hurting themselves and then they flip and then they go to the other direction. And then you have people then spreading a lot of really bad misinformation that, you know, whatever, whatever their deal is like with, going like eating meat and all sorts of things that they do afterwards um and that's because they didn't have this element this element is essential like if you don't have this element and you're trying to be raw and and fruitarian and all of this and doing long juice fast without the colon cleansing you're really really in for a very very bad surprise a little bit down the road and the thing is like i want people to succeed at this life this is not my life yeah this is not my life i don't want to be raw vegan i don't want to be fruitarian i have half of my day to be like, like juices and fruits but then the other half is like i eat cooked i love cooking i love baking <laughs> i love all sorts of things i eat gluten-free and i have a very very clean life you know and all of this but I still eat like I eat whatever the fuck I want, you know, and I'm okay with that for me. Maybe at some point I'll be like, no, I really need to do fruits and um, I will be totally fine with that. But if someone is doing this without the support of colon cleansing, it's going to be for anybody, isn't it? It's just like when, when you're cleaning out from, such a bad diet i feel feel most of us have had you know chemical laden foods all our lives especially me coming from a british lifestyle eating takeaways we lived on takeaways we lived mm -hmm. on greasy fatty foods yeah, that's the everyone's only. gonna benefit yeah it, but like i say it gets a bad rap and it's good to educate yourself like you've done a lot you've had a lot of experience and and bringing it over to cook and yang and, and and teaching others what's the safest and it makes sense with what you were saying. It has that gentle. If you're filling up, even I felt something's not quite right when it was filling up so strong. I was like, and it's painful. I'm like, that seriously can't be good. Why? And that that to me did it was a disconnect. So when you've said that, I can resonate. And you said, no, that's, that's it's not it's not an effective way to do it. So yeah. yeah, it's just getting the right education. And if something feels like it doesn't resonate. I usually go with that and I think that's why I've been called to to speak with you to see your you know your 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 gravity colonic. so where did it originally come from uh it's from Dr Woods I think he was osteopath in oh. the United States I think he was in Chicago like and he was he just invented this system like uh I think he may have had an engineer help him or he what he had engineering tendencies or something like that because the way that it works is freaking genius yeah. it works through a speculum that has a water tube but the water tube has a a curve that means that whenever the waste is going out the the waste will never go up to the water tube right and it allows for the water to go in and out at the same time which is just so brilliant and then the fact that the tubes are rubber and you can really pump with them mimicking peristalsis plus the fact that you have like the tank above like a certain um distance from the body and using gravity as the thing that leads the whole session is freaking amazing like mm -hmm. i get people like wow this is how does this work because they're you know if they've done um machine or whatever yeah there's a pump of some kind bringing the pre the water pressure into the body but this is all gravity led it's yeah. all gentle because of this and when you put it to a certain distance from the body it the body will always be dictating how much 
is going to be going inside. So, and how long is a session? Is it about an hour? It's about an hour. So it ends up being like the shortest session that I've ever done is something around 35 minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think um, for me, I'm always around 30 minutes for myself. Um, I don't have the patience that I have with clients that I have with myself. Um, but uh, with clients, yeah, like usually anywhere between 35 minutes and an hour and 15 minutes. But an hour and 15 minutes is like way too long. Like usually I cut it off a bit before that unless something really crazy is happening. And then I explain to the person, you may be really exhausted for the rest of the day. So if you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. Like, you know, doing that for you. But I want to warn them because I don't want anybody to be dead for the rest of the day, you know? Like, yeah. that's How not do you know? What, what do you mean by something crazy? What's, do you feel like, like the amount of stuff that's coming out or they're like in some discomfort? Usually it's just the amount of stuff that's coming out that just will not stop. Uh, sometimes when too much comes out, I will start the session early just because like I can see this is enough for this person. Like I have one of my really good friends on the island, like one of her last sessions with me, it was just crazy the amount of stuff that was coming out of her. And I was like, I think that's enough. Like yeah. if I don't stop it now, like you're really going to be like really, really exhausted for the rest of the day, like in bed the rest of the day. So yeah, like it takes quite a bit of energy like to do a session I think when people are um I think it's a little bit different the way that it works in New York to the way that it works here I just because I feel that people are so disconnected from themselves like I don't feel people get as tired because they're so disconnected and they're like I have to go yeah, go, 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 go. yeah yeah but here like when people have so much space to really feel um I have noticed that people do get a bit more more tired from sessions sometimes like I mean I had a client yesterday that's just like oh my I was amazing the rest of the day I had so much energy everything was great yeah. awesome but there's yeah, a lot of sessions. yeah no no every yeah. session is very different I also have clients like the same client like she's told me oh my god I was like so tired the rest of the day I'm like I hear you yeah it happens sometimes you know so we have to take it in stride every day is very different every session can be very different uh it depends on where the person is at and the toxins as well when you're releasing a lot of that that's obviously disrupting so I I can imagine that's why it takes yeah. out of you yeah yeah even like when people are going through release of like parasites and things like that that can be a lot of work you know that that's a lot of work that's a lot of work. That's tiring work. So yeah, you have to. Consider, huh? Sorry, what did you say? I said like you have to consider that you know if you would be like some a regular session, I would say at least ten to fifteen poops. Say, yeah, that's a lot of energy for the body to process that much poop. You know, so if you're doing that at once it's not it's not uh it's not costless mm -hmm. right like there there's an energy exchange in everything even a massage is an energy exchange yeah. there is an energy that you're giving so that you can receive the massage and so that you can work through the muscles like when the person is working you so not just relaxing that's yeah. taking energy Right. And a colonic is going a lot deeper than a massage. So it takes a lot more energy. So you have to kind of balance a trade off between how much how much energy am I taking? And how much energy am I giving? Right. I want to make sure that it's somewhat balanced, uh, because, like I said, when someone has a really good colonic, then they get a lot of energy. The rest of um, like for however much amount of time that the body would have used to process all that matter that came out. But I also don't want to steal so much energy to be able to give that energy, you know, like it's like you have to kind of balance it a little bit and make sure that you're not like, again, my whole philosophy is not hurting someone. 
I don't want to hurt anybody. I want the session to be the best possible, the kindest, gentlest thing possible for them. Like, yeah, so. And uh, do you do the, so you do the lymphatic massages as well? Is that on the, t on the stomach? Yeah, I do, but that's not in the same session. Okay. So I do a belly massage like that I, I touch I'm touching specific points in the belly like as I'm doing I'm actually going like this because this is what I would do normally yeah. Yeah. so I'm I'm touching on the stomach certain points in the colon uh, to simulate a release but it's not a lymphatic massage lymphatic massage is uh is I mean I do lymph, lymph work right now these days like I'm also doing um vagus nerve and lymphatic uh, sessions. Um, so there are some points in there that are like, there's one main point like in the curve um, under the ribs that you, that that is a lymphatic point, but that's only that one. And yeah, like all skin has lymph. So yes, technically it is a lymphatic, like treat, like separate treatment. Limbs, but it's not that like, it's not focused on that. It has nothing to do with that for me. That's just colon uh, simulation with specific trigger points. So it's trigger, trigger, trigger. And I know, I don't know how I know, but I guess years and years of experience, I know where to touch to get people to release. So yeah, Amazing. And you can do them both together because one of my friends who came with you, she said she got, I think, the massage first and then you can do after uh, yeah after. so i do i've done um i prefer to do it the day after oh, so, okay the, yeah, so the, the same day is a little bit much i feel like again um i have done one person like that um because i think they had limited amount of time or whatever the deal was but um i prefer to do the lymphatic sessions on one day and then the next day do the colonics because I also want to see what the effect of the lymphatic sessions are because when I'm doing that some people have crazy reactions I've had people that have blisters in their mouths people that get like uh, a lot of um, issues with their ears their limbs get crazy and all sorts of stuff and that's just telling me that there's a lot of issues underneath you know like that that we need to be worked through um, but then like that the colonic can come in and release some of the pressure from the body and give the body a little bit of uh, space to heal that faster it's a detox symptom like any other detox symptom when you have detox symptoms that's the time to get a colonic so if you're doing a fast and i always tell my clients okay they're like oh when should i come like should i come at the beginning should i come whatever and i was like okay how many colonics are you doing if you're doing just one you want to come either when you have a lot of symptoms yeah. detox symptoms or at the end because then we get the most right but you don't want to be suffering throughout your entire detox so you definitely want to get it when you're feeling like shit that's the time to get it and this is like one thing that really annoys me because when people get sick, um, that's the time to do the colonic. Yeah, yeah. It's not like, I'm gonna wait to get better to do the colonic. Yeah. No, that's the time to, do, that's the perfect time to do the colonic. When I'm sick, I'm like attached to that thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it doesn't happen very often, but I'm like, I am going for it. Like, because it just helps me heal so much faster. Yeah. So. And, and with the lymphatic massage, is that is that an hour normally? And that whole It body? depends. Every session is very different. Um, I'm following a protocol from my teacher. So he has like tested this with thousands of people. So I just trust his guidance. Like, and there's seven, seven different steps. Like step zero is the assessment. And then there's six other ones that you go through in order. Um, unless there's immune... Um, issues with the person then you kind of change the order of the sessions but you want to go through all of the sessions like to kind of see what reaction the person has sometimes i would need to repeat the same session a few times so uh for example i had someone that had like um a lot of reactions in her ears like in the lymph nodes and there was like a lot going on <clears throat> for to heal that the correct thing would have been okay when you've
detox that and your body gets back to normal, we need to do that again. But a lot of people are not very interested, especially when they're coming on vacation to feel like shit for yeah. vacation. Yeah. You know, that's kind of how you heal. Like you have to go through your body's process. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, like the idea is like, okay, so if you have detox symptoms, then you need to wait until they subside and then you do it again and then you do it again and then you do it again until that, all that stuff kind of goes out. And then when you do it, you don't get any type of reaction and then you move on to the next step and then you move on to the next step. Yeah, yeah. That would be. Powerful. And I just, I see that quite quickly, the results of some people is that like you said, like the, the energy, not everybody, but generally in the next few days, they have a lot more energy. They feel lighter. The, they've got mental clarity. They have a lot of um, clear, clear pathways. And that's why a lot keep got, you know, keep having it in their lifestyle and their skin, like you've got great skin. So it helps to, because the skin <laughs> is the biggest organ. So when we're cleansing, and we're cleaning out it's the, the first thing we start to see so i see a lot of those benefits when um when they go for colonic so i'm i'm assuming that's the same well it's going to be the same yeah even me like um i mean when i started with colonics i came through i came through the detox lifestyle through vanity i had a lot of acne my face was like riddled with acne and i was wow. also super inflamed like puffy everywhere it was really really bad um and yeah I healed that it took me a year and a half I do know that some people get really like I have a friend right now that she's she gets really exasperated because of the skin issues that she has and I'm like there is no quick cure with any of this there is nothing like I have to educate my clients all the time I'm like you're looking for like it's not gonna happen with a colonic i'm like i put it in my form it's not a magic pill it's not a magic it's not a miracle cure it's not gonna do that for you it's not gonna do that for anybody it is something that can be a very very useful tool but it's not going to be like like i i tell this to everybody the best joke that i've ever heard in my whole life is someone like oh i'm clean now right everything is out right are you kidding? I'm like, you're so funny. You're so funny. <laughs> yeah. That's what I say all the time. I'm like, oh no, dude. It's, you it's have lifestyle no choices, isn't it? It's lifestyle choices. If they can't change that, it's like I've just done a video, I need to edit it, but I've just talked about the um always on the healing gen, you know, always on these detoxing when they're not even they keep going back to their old lifestyles, then going back into cleansing back into it's just wasting the money the need to change the lifestyle it's a lifestyle and what you're incorporating is yeah. the, it's like that can be so damaging my brother's doing that right now and i'm like dude you need to stop like you're gonna really hurt yourself yeah. you're gonna hurt your liver you're gonna hurt like all sorts of things like you know you can't keep doing this to your body to go on a deep detox and then after that you go back to eating shit I'm like, no. And then his weight goes up and down. And I've seen quite a few people that struggle with this. And I'm like, you're really, really killing yourself slowly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the stress that the body goes under, the nervous system. Oh my God. Like I shudder because now I'm doing so much work with like the nervous system and the vagus nerve and all of this. And I'm like, I shudder to think what your nervous system is like when you're putting your body under this much stress and then you're going back and then you're doing it again and then you're going back and then you're doing it again please stop people really yeah. you need to stop this is not okay <laughs> this is not okay you know it's quick fixing it's it, this is why i work a lot on the on the mindset it's not it was all all or nothing you know i'm gonna do it all but no it's those little steps and this is great to incorporate as a safest the gravity colonics is the safest regular consistent um, tool to use yeah i think it's great doing that rather than just changing your diet altogether just do things slowly and then incorporate this 
Hong Kong is the best. Like when I listen, before I came to Thailand, I was not in the best relationship. And I spent the, the last two years after I stopped working in New York City as a therapist, accumulating shit in my body because I wasn't in the best relationship. So I was eating like and using food as comfort and all sorts of things, right? I wasn't like, I didn't go off the rails, but I went enough that I gained significant amount of weight. And I know that there was a lot of accumulation. It's taken me years to get back my body, to get back my digestion, to get back all of that. Even though before that, I was the healthiest that I had ever been in my whole life. I had been doing three years of almost nonstop colonics. I was like, almost entirely raw vegan and I was like in the best shape of my life right and still only took two years of not eating healthy two years to undo all of that work and then have me going at it for like I think it took me for about four years to really get back to a place where I felt really really stable in my body and my health digestion and all of that and um and I've done it, but I, I knew, I'm like, you cannot do this one day to the next real vegan thing yes. that you did when you were 24. You're not 24 anymore, you know? Yeah, you don't get away with it as you get older. <laughs> oh, so yes. I did it so slowly, so slowly. Yes. I changed yes. little by little. Okay, the rice for the potato, the potato for the sweet potato, the sweet potato for the pumpkin, you know, like, Slowly, slowly, I change and I change and I change. And now I feel super stable with my diet and with everything that's like happening in my life. It's like super, super stable, but it's taken me a while. And when I get clients all the time asking me questions and I'm like, you just need to look for the thing that's causing the most issues and then try to change that. To change one thing at a time. Don't try to go for changing 20 things at a time. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. In the long term, you want to go slowly. That's the best way to approach it, really. Sustainable then, yeah. And you mentally shift and you embody it. So your lifestyle overall then, is it quite active? You know, you're, you're eating well, like we're saying, you're, you're eating, like a lot, uh, having a lot of juices. And then just actively, because you have more energy. I bet you've had more energy than you've ever had, especially with incorporate in the colonics. Yeah, I I feel because I work now I'm working a lot. So it depends on like how much I work, um, how much energy I have. Like I give everything in my sessions to my clients. So it depends. Like if I have quite a few sessions within a week, I do have to come back to myself quite a lot so that does take a little bit of energy um I am pretty active I would say like I have had periods where I don't do much but then I do hike quite often and um I try to keep myself like more exercising in that way like because that's the nicest like I love being in nature so that's that's really fun um I cook for myself almost 90 I think I would say 90 to 95 percent of all my food is at home um, I, I'm not touching, like I eat at two different places here that I know I feel good with her food because even in the vegan places and in the healthy places, oh, not using the good oils, they're salting everything so much. Salty, yeah. And I am like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Um, it, for me, it's just the worst, uh, I've had really, really bad reactions to eating out. So I just really control it now. I honestly, I feel that if someone wants to really change a huge part of their life, eat at home. Yes. Get, get a plan, plan well uh, to be able to eat all your food at home. And you're going to see what a huge difference that makes in everything. That's, that's, in the last year, that's been the biggest shift in everything. Because before that, I was eating a lot out. Yeah. It's so easy in Thailand, especially. It's cheap. Yeah. It's fast. You know, um, and you don't have to worry about whatever. But I found that that is a very big investment in my health that now I'm unwilling to go without. Um, if you plan well, everything will flow very smoothly and 
I find that I'm eating uh, a million times more gourmet, delicious food at home. Yeah. For me, than I ever, ever did out in all the fancy vegan restaurants. I cook much better than all of that. So I prefer to eat at home. More controlled, better quality. You know what's in it. And that, yeah. And you you would love. (laughs) It changed everything. It changed everything. I really honestly feel that that is one of the main things that if if you wanted to really even if you were eating a little bit more because I have my days like I just made like a big mac burger because I felt like I made the bread I made the burger patty I made the big mac sauce (laughs) I made everything you know besides the tomatoes and the whatever everything I put together the whole burger and I was like I want to have it I'm happy like I it makes me happy to experiment with food and the things that I may have liked at some other point maybe it won't taste exactly the same but it will be a lot more fulfilling and satisfying yes I also have my days when I have pizza but I'm making it myself that's a huge difference yeah yeah that's a huge difference you know the amount of salt and oil and the sugar they mix together yeah you'll definitely feel a huge difference in your health I feel the same yeah I agree with that yeah so if people want to work with you, you can offer consultations online as well, maybe help do a setup. They can see you in person. Uh, where would they find you? Where's the best places for information on, what, on your yeah, work? Yeah, just Instagram is probably the best place. I do all my poop-related stuff at poop.better. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So That's I'm on better. Instagram with that. And yeah, I do... I sell the systems, I sell the speculums themselves because a lot of the people that follow me are therapists. So sometimes they just wanna, they just want the speculum. So I'm like, okay. Um, I do consultations for um, for setting up the systems or digestive issues and things like that, or how to use colonics. Like I've done all sorts of things in that direction um and yeah like and I give sessions here in Copangan like it's uh the I guess yeah for me that and that's gonna be forever if I stay here it would be forever because I don't see myself not ever doing this like I really don't like I don't see an end because I feel like I it, it's needed so yeah well when we offer retreats I'll be bringing you in to come and do these assistant colonics. So I'll definitely be in touch. Uh, yeah, they have the, I've, I've done that before. Um, I almost went to Bali for this uh, with one of my friends and I helped her when she had her retreat here from China, like all her Chinese uh, uh, students. Like, and I did a bunch of colonics for them. And there's another lady that's coming soon to the island. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm almost like even interested in like traveling with this a bit. I think yeah. it would be so much fun to be able to set up and just help at different retreats and things like that. I think that would be fun. It's not something I've done, but why not? You know, <laughs> why not? Why not? Yeah, that would be awesome. But then you can come to Phuket, start off with Phuket, <laughs> and then yeah, then you'll start exploring all over. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah. take all over around the globe. <laughs> Well, awesome. So thank you so much. I always end my interviews with the be, feel, and stay, rollicious. So we go be, feel, stay, rollicious, and then we do a kiss. Would you like to do that with me? <laughs> okay, you ready? Sure. Be, be feel, stay, stay rollicious. <laughs>